Hi everybody, it's Lauren Brown, also known as Raggedy Royal on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and now YouTube. And today we're going to be doing this wing cut crease. So, I'm going to be doing it in pink. However, if you want to use any color, you can just follow along with the steps that I'm doing. It's going to be great. I'm going to edit this part and put it in the beginning of the video. Make sure you do your face after your eyes. I'm going to do my eyes after my face. I already did my face because I'm making this tutorial. But, do your eyes. Do this tutorial before you do your face makeup. Because there's fallout and fallout's not scary but you don't want to do your face twice um give this video a like if you enjoy and i'm going to jump right straight into it all right so as always i'm going to start out with an eye primer i applied the abh eye primer all to my lids i'm going to use a very light primer because today we're using a colorful eyeshadow and i like to use light primers when i use a colorful eyeshadow so that the color can you know have a chance to show up as vibrant as it is it's kind of like coloring on a white piece of paper versus coloring on top of a brown piece of paper the white piece of paper is going to be more true to tone so i like to use this eye primer here it's my favorite the abh eye primer and all i did was apply that all over the lid I'm going to make sure that I flatten it out because it has creased as I'm talking, all right? Now, today we're going to go in with the color pink as our color for our wing cut crease. However, you can use any color that you want and still follow this tutorial. When I say shades like light pink, then use light whatever color you're using. So if I say a medium pink, then use whatever color you're using. You'll still get the technique, the steps, and know when to apply which color that you're using. But for today, we're using pink because that is what the ragdolls asked me to do on my live. Also. It just matches my hair. I'm in a I'm in a pink hair. I'm in a pink hair. All right. So first, we're going to go into the Pretty Chic palette from Colored Rain, and I've actually used this palette in a couple videos before, so it might be a little familiar to you. I'm going to go into shade Secret Admirer. The name is almost worn off. I use my palettes for real, and you can you can tell. And I'm going to be taking my trusted BH Cosmetics brush that doesn't have a name, but any fluffy blending brush will do. And I'm going to go right into the top of the crease, all right? So the crease is, when you open your eyes, you know that bend right there? That is your crease. Now, we all have different eyes, different creases, so your crease may not be right there. A good guideline is to go from halfway from your lash line to your brow bone. So if you say, you know what, I can't figure out where my crease is. Go from halfway from your lash line to where your eyebrow is. And that's where we're going to apply this color here. And I'm going to apply it all over the lid. So from the inner corner where your tear duct is, all the way to the outer corner. In fact, I'm going to drag it out just a little bit. So, when you apply your primer with this eyeshadow look, you might want to just drag it out a little bit because we're gonna need a lot of space to cut the crease and do the wing and do all the drama stuff, right? So, I wanna make sure I take that pink shade all the way out there. I'm also going to be mindful to blend all the way up to the brow. So that covers that stark white. So if you are one of the people who say, okay, wait, a white primer, I feel like that's gonna look crazy and contrast with my skin, or I feel like it's gonna leave, you know, a stark contrast right under the brow bone, I blend the, the color all the way up to the top. So that is not an issue. There is something in my brush. If you just saw that sliding across my eyes, you are not crazy. I don't know what that was. All right. Boom. Next shade. We are going to take a Morphe M433. And we're going to go into shade Sweetheart. I'm going to go into a little bit of shade Daydream. So this medium pink and a little bit this darker pink. We already added the light shade. And we're going to be blending from light to dark today. So sometimes I blend from dark to light. Today we're blending from light to dark. Meaning that we put the light shades on first and then the dark shades to add contrast after. All right, I'm gonna go from the inner corner where your tear duct is. And this is going to be our guideline for the wing. So I'm going all the way across the eye and I'm winging it up here. So it's not straight out because your eye is not straight out. There's a little there's a little bone right here. When, once you get past the eye, you'll feel it. This feels different than in here. So you're gonna go all the way. When you feel the outside of that, that eye, when you hit the edge of your eye, you're gonna just wing it up. And that's just our rough guideline. We will deepen that, we'll make it much more dramatic, but we need the rough guideline first. And we'll do the same on the other eye. Only thing with the wing cut, well, not the only thing. 
There's a, there's a lot of things with a wing cut crease. But one of the most important things is that you want to make sure that the eyes are even. Because if the cut crease isn't even, if the lines are not even, if the wing, the angle of the wing is not even, your eyes will look crazy and it'll bother you. You won't know what it is. You'll think it's your lashes. You'll think it's so many other things other than the crease. I'm telling you right now. Only two things that can really mess up, like, your eyes looking like distant cousins by marriage instead of twins is putting on your lashes weird and having a different angle of your cut crease. Those two things whew, will drive you mad. Okay. Not perfect, rough estimate, like I said. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go in and just blend that shade up into that light pink. Ignore my brows, I'll fix them later. They're gonna get very disheveled through all, through all of this blending. Just blending, doing small circle motions with a soft hand. Well, as soft as my hands get. I'm a little rough. Y'all comment that all the time. Oh, I post and tell me, it's so rough. I didn't think it was gonna work out, but then it did. <laughs> Fair assessment. Okay, boom, time to go into our next shade. So now I'm gonna be opening the Bright Matte 2.0 palette from Beauty Bay, which is also a familiar friend to this channel. And I'm going to go into shade Velvet and a little bit of cocoa. So I'm gonna do this and a little bit of cocoa. I'm not gonna go into black. I'm gonna go into brown because that gives pink a nice definition, like a nice depth, um, but it's not quite black. Black. It's black, all right? But browns and sometimes like oranges, reds, different shades like that, you can play around with it and it not like be black. So to add a little bit of we're going to velvet and a little bit of cocoa. I like using shade Fig too when it comes to a pink eyeshadow look because it's purple, but per pinks, it's very easy to get stuck off in red, orange land or purple land. So let's just keep this look pink. I'm going to be going in on an M456. I hope everything I just said on that color made sense. Y'all know I'm a color theory nerd. Um, but this is a smaller brush. So I wanna point that out. As you go down your eye, your eyeshadow brushes become thinner or more dense, right? So you have this one, which is most fluffy. This one is, you know, medium fluffy. And then we're going down and you will see why. One, because these dark colors, you don't want them to have as much uh, of a wide range to play with as these fluffy brow brushes because you don't want the dark shades in that much space as you want the light shades. So keep that in mind. If you're like, I don't know where to use this eyeshadow brush. I don't know what eyeshadow brush to use at this part of the eye. As it goes down, you get thinner or more dense. The brush hairs are more densely packed. All right, I'm going from the inner tear duct and I'm going under where we had that line before. So where we just drew that, I'm going right there. With every dark shade, I'm gonna go in just a little bit of that dark pink now without the brown. But with every dark shade, you are solidifying more and more. Boom. That looks good. All right, going in on the other side. Okay, wait. <laughs> That's much darker than this side. Okay, that's better. And your eyes will never be perfect, right? They'll never be perfectly symmetrical because your eyes themselves are not perfectly symmetrical. But you know, we wanna at least try. My left eye is always, comment down below which eye is your trouble eye. I know it always change from person to person, but my left eye is my trouble eye. This is also a great look to explain why I do both eyes at one time. I know some people do one eye and then the other eye. I feel like it's so hard to get things symmetrical when you've like finished the entire eye and then you're starting over on the other eye. It's just so, are y'all one eye finish and then start the next eye people? Or are you both eyes at the same time? I've never got down with the, even when I make tutorials, you see I go from eye to eye and I show you guys both eyes, mostly because like I try to leave in if there's any mistakes or any questions that I feel like I can answer. And it's easier to do that if I show you both eyes, but also, I can't, like, I can't do one eye than the other. All right, now when it comes to this tail, it can get very dark and harsh. Make sure you just go back in with these other shades that you used before. So we're going back in with that medium pink and blending that out. 
I'm gonna go in a little bit with the light pink and blend that out. All right, now, as you can see, we have the light pink, we have the dark pink, but our medium pink has gotten a little bit lost in translation. So like I say in every single eyeshadow tutorial, you'll never blend an eyeshadow just once. Like you'll never just put it on the lid and that be it. You always wanna go back, no matter how advanced you get in makeup. In fact, once you get more advanced in makeup, this is more when you realize it, you have to go back and blend. Every look you do, you have to go back and blend. You have to go back and reinforce those colors and get that blend right. And that is, you do that by going back in steps and doing it again. So I'm going back in with that medium pink. Okay, well. <laughs> All right, now I feel like there is a discrepancy between, or there's a division between this medium pink I just did and this pink right here. So I'm gonna to need to add, I think I'm gonna go in with shade Velvet, just that, not the darkest shade that we've added, but just that medium. So this is light, this is medium, this is like medium and large, not medium, but large. Anyways, we're going with that. Just to try to bring some cohesion to that darkest shade and that medium shade. Oh yes, this was a fantastic idea. Play around with the different shades in your palette. So if you're using a blue or a green or a brown eyeshadow right now, play around with the shades that are in the middle. That's the easiest way to blend an eyeshadow. So if I have a light pink and a dark pink, how would I blend it? I use the medium pink, those middle shades. See, cause this eye versus this eye. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? Boom. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm going out a little bit more on this side because I see that I wing this out completely on the other side. I have not done my edges yet. I will do them later. There's a debate on Twitter right now saying, do you do makeup, eyes, or hair first? And I always do hair last. I only kind of sort of do hair before, like when I'm doing a YouTube video. <laughs> like I kind of do it because I'm like, I can't start the video looking crazy, but it will be done after I finish my face. Went back in with that light pink. And just blending up, making sure there's no white spots left. Boom. I'm going to go in with one of my favorite brushes for, you know, the darkest colors, the crease, de crease definition brush. This is a Morphe M506. And I'm going to go back in with that dark pink. With a little of the dark pink and the brown, the velvet and the cocoa. And this is, like I said, thinner than the brush we used before. I'm going to go in and this is going to be my last shade that I'm going to add to make sure that I really get definition in this crease before I cut it. Now, it really depends on how dark you want your cup crease, right? So the darker you go with the shade that goes right in the crease, the more that there's going to be a contrast between the light shade that you put on the crease, right? So if you have a dark brown shade and then you put you know, a nice light pink under it is gonna look very, very sharp. And that's how you get your cut crease to look sharp, just by using, just by color. Like just by the colors you pick. Not even about the strategy, not about the products you use, just by the colors you pick. If there is a darker shade right above the crease, then it's going to look sharper. Um, but today I don't wanna go too, too dark. Like we, we could really make this dark. I'm, I don't wanna go too, too dark. I don't wanna add black or go super, super dark because I still want it to be, you know, pink. And sometimes things get out of hand and just become smoky punk, like black. Especially because the shape is already kind of like rock star. Okay. 
blending just all around. Now it's time to cut the crease. So I'm gonna be using this craft brush from Michaels. This is an Artist Loft Vienna brush too. Just a small crease brush. And instead of using my ABH eye primer because it is my favorite primer and I don't really wanna run out of it, I'm gonna be using this Morphe white primer, concealer, question mark, it, it just says Morphe. So that's all I got. I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand. I always put primers and concealers and things I'm gonna be using on my eyes on the back of my hand so that I can distribute it appropriately if i take this big old spatula with all this product on it on my eye it's going to be a, a slippery mess and we really don't want that for a cut crease especially a cut crease that is winged that goes out this far because once you once it gets everywhere in your eyes and it starts mushing you can't really get that definition back easily so i put the back of my hand and take a little bit not too much because we don't want it to be so wet that when we open our eyes it transfers right I'm going to go from the inner corner and we're gonna follow the line that we made before turn it over because I need some more boom that's our outline all right I believe in going fast on the crease I say this all the time because I feel like it's just easier than going so slow it's fat it's easier to just go faster and fix it so now you see it here, there's like a little bit too much. Here's what we're gonna try to do. We're gonna try to drag all that product down because we don't wanna get it further up. Drag all that product down, spread it out, and then we're gonna go over that line again so we can have a nice straight line. Boom. Okay, didn't mean to do that, but it's okay. We're just gonna make the line tree. No worries. And then on the outside, we are going to do the same. So I'm adding a little bit more product. Because the outside did not really get a lot. And we're winging it up. I always say do your eyes before your face. This would be a great day to do your eyes before your face when you do this eyeshadow look. Because, look. We're gonna blend this into the face that's already done, but it'd be so much easier if we could just wipe it off with a makeup wipe, but we can't do that because there is makeup underneath. I already have my base already done. If you wanna see how I've done my base, then I will put the, the video in the cards. How I do my entire face, my brows. We have a makeup foundational playlist now, which is like your makeup fundamentals, which I actually think that's what I meant to name it, but it's foundationals now. Anyways, where I show you how to do, you know, the foundational things in makeup. So if you're new to makeup, how to apply lashes, how to do brows, how, how to apply water to me, how to apply makeup to your waterline. I feel like there's so many more that I'm missing. How to do my favorite new lip combo, all those things. So check out that playlist. All right, we're gonna do the same on the other eye. Okay. Go. Not bad for a shell of a crease. I'm just calling it the shell. My first drafts are not going to be the shells. Since I messed up over here and went a little bit out, I'm going to make sure I do the same thing on this side. Okay, I'm just going to spread all this out for a second because I want to see if it's even across the two. Wow, I think that might be the most even that I've gotten it like on the first try. Okay, now that I know it's like even, I'm going to you know, go back in with a more precise hand and do the things that we were doing before. Okay. Our thoughts of even have now disappeared because I just went out of bounds. It's okay, just do it on the other eye. Y'all know I like to leave in my mistakes because what if you mis make a mistake and you're like, oh my gosh, she didn't cover that in the tutorial. I don't know what to do, I'm wiping my makeup off. Don't wipe your makeup off yet because I may make the same mistake as you. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you how to fix it.
really the key is if you ever like go out of bounds up too high on, on one part of your cut crease the key is just to go that high on every part of your cut crease that's the, if you want the cheat code just go higher just go higher that's that's practically it We want to spread this out, this concealer product, primer question mark product. We want to, we want to uh, make it as flat as possible for when we add what's next. We want to make sure that this is flat as possible, especially today because we're going to be using a matte eyeshadow. Now on the crease, you can use whatever you want. Today I'm going to be using a matte eyeshadow just to keep it as classic as possible. But if you want to see me use glitter or anything else, let me know sometimes you know you can do designs on the crease and I mean when I'm saying the crease I mean the lid so you can do whatever you want on the lid you can make it glitter you can make it metallic shade you can make it a shimmer you can all those things sound the same but I swear they're not um you can make it a matte shade you can do whatever you want today we're going to be going in with the matte I'm going to be using this Morphe 224 which is just a flat brush and I think the shade that I'm going to use on my lid just to keep it all monochromatic is that first light pink that we went in with, which is called Secret Admirer. I'm gonna get that nice and coated on both sides of that brush. And I'm gonna start on the inner corner. And I'm going to pat. The only thing about matte eyeshadows, especially light matte eyeshadows, is like, you can kind of see the definition. It's like, uh, I was gonna say like wearing a dress with like the wrong underwear, but that's not, <laughs> it's not what it's like, but kinda. I feel like the darker shades, you know, cover things better. The lighter shades, they don't, they don't give. They're not very forgiving. And you can kind of see all the texture underneath. So I'm using this flat brush. I'm trying not to go over that line of the crease. If you do go over it, um, we'll just redefine it at the end and I'll just show you how we do that. I'm going all the way out. To fix those parts where I went over the line, I'm going to take that dark shade cocoa and a little bit of velvet. Can you, there you go. <laughs> cocoa and velvet. And I'm going on this Morphe M250, which I often use for my waterline, just a small detailer brush. And I'm going to just, with a light, light hand, go over the sections that I hit with that light pink. And because the shade is darker, it's pretty simple. Pretty easy to just cover that back up. Now, if you say, oops, I made another mistake. I went over it. I went over the light pink with the brown, but now I got some brown on the light pink. Don't worry, go back in and add that light pink again. It's very simple with these matte shades because it's dry. Now, when you add glitters and things like that, it can be a little bit more difficult to cover it up because it's like you're mixing wet and dry and chunks and glitters, but it's not impossible. So still use those steps. And now we're going to go on to the wing, woohoo, to the bridge. I already have some primer left over. So I'm going to take that primer. And now at this point, you know, you can use so many different things. You could use, uh, a liquid liner that's the same color. I do have liquid liners that I could mix to get this color. You could use a liquid lipstick. You can use a lot of things. You could do black right here. Since I'm making this monochromatic, I'm keeping it monochromatic. I'm gonna go in with the exact eyeshadow that I was using before. Also, this is a great tip if you don't have liners. Like I try to make videos with people in mind that don't have the like expansive makeup because most people don't have this expansive makeup collection. So I'm gonna show you how you can make the liner, you know, with some eyeshadow and some primer. All right, so I'm taking that white and I'm going to just create a wing line. So I'm gonna do that is I'm going to take this Morphe M165, 
So it's a brush that already has an angle. Using a straight brush or a brush that is angled like this, triangular. Even though small eyebrow brushes that have that same triangle would be a great brush to use right here. Maybe even one of these square brushes, you know, with the right angle, it could give you those sharp lines. I'm gonna be taking this brush here and I'm going to be making that straight line out. So from the corner of my eye, the outside corner, and then I'm gonna make another line going from almost the tip, almost the tip of that. You see the tips up here, almost the tip, down back towards the lash line, right? So that is our shell. And now I'm gonna just color that in with the white. And I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit on the lash line, not all the way in, you can if you would like to, but today I am not going to do the inner corner liner vibe. All right, my look a little messy. It's okay, we'll clean it up later. I'm getting that flat because I'm about to add matte eyeshadow on top of there too. I'm gonna be using another flat brush. You could use this brush if you would like. I, I don't like, I don't wanna use that brush. I'm gonna use another flat brush. This is a Morphe M224. Are these the same brush? These are the same brush. I'm just using a different one for a different color. I'm gonna go into velvet and a little bit of that brown just so it can be a perfect match with the crease shade. I want it to be a perfect match so everything looks cohesive. I'm gonna add that all the way onto the waist. I'm just gonna take a powder brush and try to blend that away as best as possible. I'm gonna take just a smidgen. I'm gonna take just a smidgen of foundation on this straight brush, this flat brush, and I'm gonna get that as straight as possible. First of all, doing that, you see how it just kind of like made that thin part of the line? That's usually how you get those thinnest part of those eyeliners. You ever seen somebody eyeliner, you're like, how do they get that end part so thin? Taking one of these brushes right here and just sliding it, it just, it thins it out for you. But the reason I really did that was so that I could get a nice um, guideline of how much more I needed to add at the bottom. Boom, there we go. That's practically the eye, ladies and gentlemen. God is amazing. Okay, I'm gonna do this eye because it's gonna take a second and I ain't got that much storage. So when we come back, we're gonna do the waterline. Hold on. Okay, so both wings are done. I'm gonna take a little bit of that white primer and go in on this inner corner because I have dragged it down a little bit too far for my liking. So I'm just gonna add that primer there. And then I will put a white eyeshadow on top of it later. But while I was off camera, I did take just a clean blending brush, random blending brush, just a Morphe M441, and just blend out that pink because it was a little bit, you know, harsh. Blend out that pink on the edge. If you don't feel like doing that, use the smooth tool or the matting tool on Facetune. I mean, if we're gonna be real, let's just be real in here. You can use that as well. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit of that light pink and a little bit of white just to the inner corner. It is time to do the waterline. So I'm gonna be using the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk, and I'm gonna be going in with this Colored Rain a Small Detail Brush. It's called the Precise Liner Brush, actually. And I'm gonna just be going in on my waterline. If you wanna learn more about what's safe to put on your waterline, how I apply things to the waterline, the different colors and how they affect your eye differently, how they, you know, go with certain looks, then check out my waterline one-on-one -on -one video. I'll put it in the cards. I'm just gonna apply that white here. Boom, now it's time to go in on that lower lash line. A little bit of the light and medium pinks. And I'm going to be going on that blending brush, which is probably too big for this, but we move. It's already on my face now. And I'm going to just be blending onto the bottom of the eye.
the key is to blend the light shade on the lower lash line first and then get that dark shade really close to the lash line and lash line is just a funny name for where your lashes are so this is your upper lash line this is your bottom lash line I'm going to be taking this Morphe M433 and I'm going to go into that shade of Velvet from the Beauty Bay palette, that dark pink, and I'm going to be going with the light hand right underneath the white. So the white is going to be extending the eye and the adding these shades to the lower lash line just, you know, incorporates well with the rest of the eye look on top. And it looks as if, you know, we've extended this liner down right under the eye. I'm not going to go all the way to the inner corner. I'm going to keep it about mm, a centimeter or two away from where we just added that light pink. In fact, I'll make it more intentional by adding the light pink on the bottom. I feel like this opens the eye up more. I feel like when I drag that dark shade all the way in, into the like inner corner, it just it creates a different shape. But I'm not going for that today. That sounds real aggressive. I'm not going for that today, but that's that's not the look we're going for. All right, so now I'm going to do lashes and lips, and I'll come back. If you want to know how I apply my lashes, I have a video on that. I'll put it up in the cards. If you want to know how I do my new lip, I'll put that up there as well. All right, so I'll see you in a couple seconds for the outro. Here is the final. Let me give you a close-up. Let me give you a close-up. Ow. 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 Here is the final look. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned anything, if you like this look. If you want to see more looks like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We're almost at 40,000 subscribers and I'm really excited. Also, check me out on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Raggedy World for more looks like these. And also more fun. On my TikTok series, I've just posted some new installments, some new videos to my bucket list series where I try out different foods, cuisines, things. I just did a triathlon, which I made a vlog about, but I also put on TikTok. Went to go see Renaissance. I'll be doing a lot of things. Go check me out my other socials. Make sure you comment what look you want to see or what thing you want to learn makeup wise down below. That really, really, really helps me put together my to-do list and figure out my priorities so that I can best serve, you know, you guys. Uh, the ragdolls on Instagram actually asked for this wing cut crease and that's why we're here today. If you have any things that you want to learn, let me know down below in the comments and I'll see you in my next video, which will be really soon because I'm back on my Zoom. I'm back on a roll. So. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you're locked in for the next one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.